When it comes to the speed of a boat on the water, it's a lesser known fact that a boat doesn't go as fast when the radio is not working properly. Now having some audio entertainment on a boat for some is not a priority, while for others, like we said, without the radio, the boat is basically worthless to them. So if you wanted to add a radio to your boat, repair your radio, or upgrade your system, what would you need in order to make a great boat stereo system? Because there are a few components that are necessary to get that great sounding system, and if you skip out, then you'll be left with a slow, unenjoyable, disappointing boat ride with poor sound quality, making anyone you take out feel like you just don't care about them. Now with all jokes aside, if you are new here, you should consider subscribing because if you have a boat, use a boat, enjoy boating, then this channel is perfect for you because that's all we cover, boating. And when it comes to setting up a boat stereo system, let's start by talking about speaker placement. Because unlike a car or your home theater system, on a boat, you can have a great sounding stereo system when you're anchored up, but many people forget that as soon as you start moving, the wind is going to drown out any of that decent sounding music, podcast, or audible book that you are listening to, as well as leaving the sound waves behind you as you move through the water, making the speaker placement so much more vital on the boat than these other places where you are in an enclosed area. Now on some boats, if you've got the money, they just stick speakers in wherever they see a flat piece of fiberglass and simply load the boat up with speakers which is cool and all if you can do that but for the rest of us sticking with a simple system of a couple of well-placed speakers and a subwoofer is going to be just what we want and we'll cover all the components of the system in a second the key to the speaker placement though goes along the lines of what audio professionals call beaming and i'm not an audio professional but beaming is basically where a speaker can sound great from any angle until a certain frequency then it drops off and you have to be directly in front of it. Without getting any more complicated than that, let's just stick with the theme of having the speaker pointed directly at you, and then going a step above that and talking about the locations of the speakers being directly at you or under the gunnels, having the speakers under the gunnels keeps the sound waves inside of the boat. If you've got tower speakers mounted on the tower, then when you're on plane at any significant speed above wakeboarding or skiing speed, then the sound is just going to be blasted out of the boat and you're losing the power of the system when you don't have that 40 speaker setup. Whereas having the side speakers on the console below the gunnels, this will make the sound wave bounce off the gunnel and back into the boat towards you. It's a simple concept, but it will improve the sound of your system while you're in the boat greatly. But if you're going to be at the sandbar or towing someone, then the tower speakers are going to be more of what you were looking for. Because you aren't looking for sound quality at speed, but great sound while the boat isn't moving fast or at all, and even when you aren't in the boat. So knowing about where you want your speakers mounted, let's talk about the components that make up a great system. These are going to be the head unit, which is the actual radio itself, Then you are going to want to have an amplifier for the speakers, as well as at least four decent speakers and a subwoofer. Now the quality of your head unit is going to affect the quality of the sound and how loud you can get your system, as well as how expandable the system is. There are tons of available options out there when it comes to brands for a head unit, amps, speakers, and subs. I would say that your top two are going to be JL Audio and Fusion, and Fusion is actually owned by Garmin, so they integrate very easily with Garmin products, which currently also have a contract with Yamaha and are making the Yamaha vessel displays. But back on the head unit side, I would say to go with a good mid-range unit, and the main thing that you want to consider are going to be what you want the unit to do. The more power output the unit has, the louder you are going to get your system. Just make sure it has the input settings that you are wanting to have. Most of them all come with Bluetooth these days, and fewer and fewer people are using CDs on a boat anymore, so there's that thought too. With this output discussion though, the power that comes out of a head unit is usually pretty low, and that is why you are going to need a good quality amplifier in order to get that extra wattage that is needed to feed the speakers and the subwoofer. Which is where we need to start talking about how to choose the amp and the speakers. The amp is going to be dependent on what speakers you buy because you are going to want to look at the RMS wattage of the speaker which is the speaker's ability to take in a constant supply of power. 
If you've got a speaker that is rated for 100 watts RMS, then you only need an amp that can supply that 100 watts RMS. If you put that speaker on an amp putting out 400 watts RMS, then it won't be long before you blow out that speaker. So if you choose four speakers that all handle 100 watts RMS, then you need an amplifier that can put out four speakers at 100 watts per speaker or channel, meaning that you want a four channel amp that produces those 100 RMS watts per channel. Now speakers do come with an impedance rating as well or ohms rating, usually either two or four. So also make sure that your ohms ratings match up as well. If your speaker is 100 watts RMS at 4 ohms, make sure that the amp is putting out 100 watts RMS at 4 ohms. Then when it comes to the subwoofer, it's the same concept as the speakers. You want to make sure that the amp can produce the right amount of power to feed that subwoofer constantly while you are listening to your tunes. You want the same impedance numbers so that you can supply the right amount of power to your sub. And something else we should mention that's pretty great about Marine Stereo Systems is that most of the decent amps and even the good speakers come with built-in crossovers, which are basically just a filter that will filter through the sound waves being sent to the speakers because speakers are designed to only handle a certain frequency. If we send the frequency that is meant to go to a low bass thumping subwoofer with lots of power to a tiny one inch tweeter that's meant for super high frequencies, then that tweeter isn't going to last very long. So having the built in crossovers that we can set to tune the system and filter those frequencies out, sending the sub what it's supposed to have and the mid range speakers what they are supposed to have, this increases the quality longevity and the sound performance of the system that a lot of people forget to do when it comes to installing all of these components on a boat. And without tuning the amps and the head unit to be sending the frequencies where they are supposed to go, that system is most likely underperforming regardless of how much money was spent to put it in. So let us know about what you have in your boat in the comments section below. Again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and smash that like button. You can also learn more information just like this by visiting us on our website at bornagainboating.com. Thank you all for hanging out with us this week, and we look forward to seeing you next week.